crisis communication. Of course, many organizations at this time now think, well, a bit tricky to communicate. However, we have to see there's a remarkable amount of organizations doing very well with their communication. And quite a number of mid-sized businesses now are thinking of, shouldn't we probably be prepared a bit better for the future? Because large organizations, corporations have departments and specialists for that, which as a smaller sized organization, you do not have. And also, when we look at the problematic side of how not so well crisis communication went in the past, there are very specific reasons why many organizations failed in the past, including large corporations. So many of them say very little or nothing at all, which is never a great option. The credibility of what they say often is very low because people heard way too often that they're going to act on X, Y, Z and nothing happened afterwards. Also, there's quite a high amount of insecurity where people think, what should I say? What do I want to say? And then often people try to keep all the options open, which only ends with a statement you make where you talk a lot, but say nothing at all. And that is the highest level of miserable failure you can ever see a leader can make. Also, you lose your social legitimization when you do that. So the easiest step away from where you are then is that you resign from your position because after you made statements without saying something, especially in times of crisis, which we have right now, you, of course, as a leader, are not in a tenable position anymore. The question is how to do it better. And this is what we're going to talk about today, crisis communication, how to do it better. So step number one, have a very clear position. So many people struggle to know when they have a clear position and when they do not. A clear position means some people will like it and some people will not. You will receive negative feedback when you have an unambiguously clear position. When you only receive positive feedback, you have no clear position. You said something which is a bit nice, bit of a crowd pleaser, maybe a bit of appeasement, which might be completely unacceptable in the situation in which you are. When anyone likes your statement, you simply did not make a point. Or maybe you didn't even have one. So stop using tricks. Stop using indirect talk where you say a lot. No, where you talk a lot, but say nothing. Stop beating around the bush. Don't do indirect, I keep the options open, talk. Because words matter. And words have consequences. When we look at the situation in which we are now, if you want to make a statement about the war of Russia, the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, the war in the Ukraine, when you avoid words like Russia, invasion, Ukraine, war crimes, as we now see them, when people who try to escape through humanitarian, humanitarian corridors, which these humanitarian, humanitarian corridors have been agreed and still they get attacked by by Russian soldiers. When you don't use these words, Russia, invasion, Ukraine, war crimes, then you're not making a point. If you as a leader in today's times step up and say something without using these words, you will receive feedback where people say that you're spineless, that you're a coward, and they will demand that you resign. And you better do, because your position is not tenable after such statement. People think you're trying to get away with it. And the main problem is many people want to make a statement, but they are either unable or unwilling to even have a strong opening. So, for example, you never and really never open any statement with, dear ladies and gentlemen, there are many reasons why you don't do that. When you want to open a statement, when you want to open a speech, any statement, the opener is there to get people's attention. So don't use anything which is boring, which is formulaic, which is archaic, completely outdated, and also when you use non-inclusive speech. So when you, for example, say, dear ladies and gentlemen, no one is going to listen to you anyway, only amateurs use these kind of words or people who try to get away with something. And when you have a moment where you don't know what to say and when no one ever taught you how to do it professionally, then it's perfectly reasonable to say, hey, I don't know how to do it, and then ask someone who can help you. There are many people out there who can help you, especially today, it is very important. So you can make strong statements, you can ask questions, statistics. A couple of weeks ago, we had a podcast about that. Feel free to click on that and listen to it, and you will find some details how to open a speech properly. However, if you don't use the right words, people will hold that against you for a very 
good reason. So stepping away from the war crimes and the Russian invasion in the Ukraine, when, for example, someone says, you're a mid-sized organization, a lot of people working at your production plants, what's your outlook when it comes to how, where do you get the energy from? How do you want to become more energy efficient? And then you have to make an unambiguously clear, sta an unambiguously clear statement. What is your plan for the future? And if you avoid words like e-mobility, solar panels, renewable energy, then people think you try to get away with something. You try to pretend that you are on the area or on the way of progress, but obviously you're not because otherwise you would use the words accordingly. And by the way, if you open a speech with ladies and gentlemen, hello and good morning, there are more than two genders in this world. They are not only men and women. That's the binary gender model. And if you use these these phrases, you, you really need a speaking training because obviously you're using you're using aspects in your speech which are completely outdated and today completely unacceptable. You will get reprimanded and very get very negative feedback for doing so. Also, anyone will think that you're a completely incompetent amateur when it comes to speaking. When no one ever taught you, then you might get away with it. But let's face it, when you are in a leadership position, no one will believe that you had no chance to learn that properly. So use inclusive speech patterns. At the end of every statement, you always have to say what you do and when you're going to do it. Don't say anything which is beating around the bush, indirect or a bit foggy, where people don't know what you really want to do and when you want to do it. I give you a couple of examples of organizations where people did not think maybe that they do that. For example, IKEA said they're closing all Russian locations. Linklate, one of the largest law firms in the world, says they are closing their Russian offices immediately. So they said what they do and when they're going to do it. So don't tell me it's not possible. It is possible. Maybe because sometimes people say, oh, but the compliance, oh, but the regulation. Yes, yeah, sometimes problem is regulation. Sometimes problem is compliance. Sometimes the problem is you. You and other leaders trying to get away with something. And that is not how it works. Crisis communication means you make an unambiguously, uh, an unambiguously clear position, which not everyone will like. You make a point. You're using up-to-date speech patterns, inclusive speech patterns. And at the end, you always say what you're going to do and when you're going to implement the steps you talked about before. If you'd like to know more about that, by the way, I published an article about it as well. And when you go to expert.nb-networks.com, put your email address in there. And once per week, every Wednesday morning, you receive an email with everything I published in the week before. And of course, when you're on the list of that email, then you get everything for free. Other people have to pay for it. And of course, it's 100% content. There's an ad-free guarantee. I never advertise during or with my email, which I send out only once per week on a Wednesday morning. Of course, when you now say, hey, I need more help, Just drop me an email. Of course, when you say, hey, we, we immediately have a, de a demand for training, speaking, coaching, consulting, or mentoring, project or interim management, I'm happy to help you with that. But that's not the point here. The point here is if you need help now and you say, hey, could you just help me? And we have a quick call, a quick chat. Yes, of course. Yes, of course we can do so. nb at nb-networks.com. Just drop me an email and we take it from there at no charge, of course. But because now it is very important that you apply what you heard in your organization, because more important than ever, it is that you are able to communicate clearly. And in times of crisis, it is even more important that you can make your point very clear and that you can make your point being heard. I wish you all the best implementing these tips in your organization. And for this week, there's only one thing for me left to say. Thank you very much for your time.